talk more about that. Yes. Our, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, or what Saji said, our goal is to make prosthetics more accessible because, um, like, high good quality prosthetics are extremely expensive, and even like very extremely expensive, and insurance coverage is often very poor. Ah, right, thank you. <laughs> insurance coverage is often very poor. So the mission of API, which is like a national organization, is to um, 3D print prosthetics because 3D printing is very cheap. Uh, so we're one of their branches at the University of Maryland that uh, practices that. Unfortunately, we could not bring any of our arms with us today, but that you can see them on the screen. Um, so we focus on engineering and production mostly, but because it's a club that is part of a national team. We also do have to do communications a lot and we like to do educational stuff with you all. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, and there's also chapters at like a bunch of other institutions. Okay, so this workshop is split up into two different parts. Um, the first part is the one you're at, and we're going to learn about computer-aided design, which is like 3D modeling. And then in the second part of the workshop, we have some 3D printers that we're going to be able to use to actually 3D print possibly the, the designs that you will create in this workshop. So first of all, what is CAD? It is a, it's the, it stands for many things. Some people might argue it stands for the Canadian dollar, the Center for Agricultural Disease. I would argue that it stands for cardboard aided design because when I design things, I like to be really hands-on. And before I put it on the computer, I make it out of cardboard just to see how it looks. And then I'll make it on the computer. And another popular way to think about it is clay aided design. And that's actually a lot, that's actually pretty similar to computer aided design. Because when you're designing things in the computer, you'll notice that it's a lot like designing with clay. You'll add and remove material in order to create your design. But we'll be focusing on computer aided design today. There are many different softwares that we can use. For example, Autodesk Inventor, Fusion 360, SolidWorks are all very popular. Autodesk Tinkercad is a very beginner-friendly one, and then Blender is for animation. But today we're going to be using Onshape since it's available online and we can for free, and we can get started right away. All right. Um, so I guess when talking about manufacturing, it's helpful to think about it in two ways. There's additive manufacturing and subtractive. Uh, the names are pretty self-explanatory. Additive, um, to create your like custom shape, you are adding a bunch of parts on, um, which is what 3D printing is. You're adding physical pieces on. Uh, and then subtractive is removing material to carve out the shape. Um, this will be more important in part two, so I'm just going to skip the rest for now so we can start. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right, you're good. So our first step is going to be to create an Onshape account. So I'd like everyone to go to onshape.com. And then in the top right corner, there's a create a student account button, which means you'll have full access to Onshape for free. So I'm going to just put in my name and my email and my email address. Then hit get started. So if you're having trouble and then you're having to process, it's like they have us in 
Not necessarily. You can use your school account or your personal account. Uh, is anyone still trying to get in? Or actually, I guess we need to stop this here so everyone doesn't enter into it. Actually, out of curiosity, unless you guys like high schoolers or college students who, who's in high school dang okay so the rest of you are in college then well hello new people uh, for those of you who just came in um uh, pull up to collegepay.com and uh, create a student account. You can use either your like student email or your personal email. It'll it'll let you do it with either. Uh, who's still trying to get into Onshape? Okay. Uh, is anyone having trouble or do you just need more time? Okay. We have to more time to work with you in the morning. It'll take, didn't take that long, but. You think still, the Wi-Fi is slow? Yeah, the Wi-Fi is slow here. Oh, yeah. Sorry, that just tried to see if I can do more for that. You could try that. Yeah, you could just try hitting the load. Did you do the email part yet? Okay, check your email, otherwise, try to. Um, if you have a computer, uh, you should go to onshape.com and just yeah. like watch along. Uh, 
Uh, kind of forgot to explain like the purpose of computer aided design. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit because like Sashi was saying, it's sometimes easier and usually more intuitive and a little more useful to create like a physical prototype. Something I strongly recommend if you're ever doing a project or you're going to have a physical product. Um, computer aided design, it's, it's very useful for 3D printing for one. That's probably the obvious one and the like flashiest one because the printer has to know what to make um and let's see another thing i've used it for in the past is doing mock-ups for proposals and it's also nice for creating like professional diagrams that have all the dimensions on it and are easy for like a machine shop to read if you don't want to 3d print your part but you want someone to like make it out of wood or something you can make very nice professional diagrams with most of these CAD programs so that is quite useful I've mostly used Autodesk Fusion in the past Autodesk Inventor and Fusion um and then I've also used a lot of the ones there's a lot of ones that are used to like model circuits that are very useful <laughs> I've used those a lot Okay, at this point, I think we can get started with um, CADing. So our first thing to note is the dimensions that we'll be working in. So we're gonna be using the default units, which are inches and pounds. Um, when you set up on shape, this should have been what it defaulted to. So in, in CAD, like I said, it's a lot like clay. And our first step when we want to make something is to sketch out a 2D version of the shape that we want to create. So that's the first um, picture that we see right here. So there's tools like lines and rectangles and circles and arcs that we can use. And I'll show that to you. And then we'll extrude that out to make some physical 3D thing. And then on top of that thing, we'll sketch again and do more extrusions. And that way we can pretty much create any type of part we want. Oh. So our first step is if you're already on the um, thing where it says, choose your default units, just leave it on default and hit next. And then in the top left corner, there's a create button. So we can hit that create button and create a new file. Name it whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll just go and give you a second. And then and then you'll it'll bring you to this.
This is the page that Onshape brings you to. Uh, what this is, is the like dimensional planes. Um, because it, when you're using this program, your object is just kind of like floating in the void, but the program has to know which way is up and down. And you do that by like, traditionally, you're going to want to start on the plane labeled top, I think on this one, because that's like the like flat axis. Yeah, these are like the X, Y, and Z planes. So... Now I'll show you what, what, what object we're going to try to create. In the end, it's just this thing. Um, whoops. It's this thing. Um, it, it doesn't really have a purpose, but it, it kind of goes through most of the tools. So it would be a, it's, it's a good, like, learning experience type of shape. Um, so our first step will be to create a sketch on the top plane. So I'm gonna go straight into on shape and at the top left here, you can see the sketch button. You can hit that button or hit shift S and it'll start a new sketch. And once we hit that button, it's gonna ask us which plane do we wanna sketch on. And we can either select the surface of a part, but we since we don't have a surface yet, we're going to select the top plane right here and then hit the blue check mark. Wait, sorry, don't hit the blue check mark. But we have selected the top plane to sketch on. And now, in order to get a bird's eye view of that top plane, in the top right, you see a little box. And that is what you can use to move your view around. But if you hit the top, of that box, it'll give you a bird's eye view of the rectangle of the of the plane. So our first sketch is going to be a rectangle. And there's two different types of rectangles. There's a the corner rectangle where you would specify the two corners of a rectangle or a center point rectangle. And we're going to use a center point rectangle because we can use this to just select the center of the rectangle and then make a rectangle around that. So when we hit the center point rectangle, I'm gonna come and hover my mouse over the middle of the sketch and it's gonna highlight the origin. If I click on that, it'll be constrained to that. Then I'm gonna just roughly make a a thing and make a rectangle. You can see that the rectangle is blue. That's because we haven't told it how big it needs to be. Once we tell it how big it needs to be, it'll turn black and it'll, that'll, which, will, which means it'll, it knows how big it needs to be. Um, so we are going to use the dimensions of two inches for the height and three inches for the width. Mine's in meters, but just ignore that. Um, so I'm going to make it two inches tall. And then I'm going to use the same dimension tool. And I'm going to select this dimension and make it three inches wide. So it should look something like that. inches tall and then three inches wide. Oh, why does it have an infinite length? 
Okay, so what you can do is um, press escape. It's just still on the rectangle tool. So let's switch to the dimension tool on the top right, right, right there. The dimension tool oh. right there. Yeah. Yes. Now you can select one of the edges and choose the. Yeah. You can put it. We generally put it like away from the, the part. Like move it up, and that's just an arrow showing us the, the size. Yeah. So you can make that three inches. Yeah. 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 Perfect. So your um, yeah, but what happened here is your rectangle doesn't know where relative to the origin it used to be. So we can actually fix that. Did you use the center point rectangle or the two point? It's fine. That's perfectly fine. All we need to do is put a dimension from the origin to the edge. So select the origin and then select the edge. Not the corner, just the edge. Yeah. Are you using the dimension too? Yeah, should be it. Okay, yeah. Click that. And then and then click the um click the sorry, press escape. It's okay. Press the command Z actually. Because we, we put a yeah, okay. Should I hit the dimension tool again. Yeah. Now hit that edge yeah. and then click the click the origin. Don't worry about this arrow. There you go. Yeah. Wait, click click on the origin. It's interesting. So it looks like we have a couple extra ones. I'm gonna move this down. And I'm gonna... Oh, we can actually use the. You see it? Did you see what I just did? I hit the axis here and then the side. Yeah. So then we can set that to one point five. <laughs> And now we're going to do the same thing for up and down. So we're going to put a dimension between this axis and this line. No, um, we can undo that by pressing escape. Yeah, that's fine. You can just click on it and make it 1.5 again. Can you pull it down? Yeah, then we can use the dimension tool to the top right there. Hit the center axis. Yeah, no, not the origin, but the axis. Yeah, yeah. This is orange. You can click on it once and then um, and then click on one of the top or bottom edges. Yeah, so that and then click on the, the axis. Yeah, I'm gonna make that one inch. And then that's an extra constraint that we don't need, so we should delete that. The um the three. Yeah. Well, either one you can delete. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, so we have made our first sketch, which means we can turn it into a 3D object. Like the fact that we drew the shape on the Now we can do turtle number two when we made it 3D. So then I'm going to go to the top left corner here and hit the extrude button. So what that'll do is pull the sketch into a 3D object. And I'm going to make it two inches. So you can just type that into the depth option here. So don't worry about how the view changed, but I put two into that depth option over there. 
this is what we're going to be working with. If you figured out already how to move things around with. You know. You figure out where the extrude is. Um, yeah, extrude. Yeah. Well, here's a hack, actually. You could just push the, the down arrow right there and then choose isometric. And it'll go back to like this, this kind of nice view. And then, yeah. Yep. There you go. Yeah. So make it two inches tall. So how are you going to vegetable again? No, um you actually put it in right here. Yeah, two inches. And it looks like you're going upside down. So if you drag the arrow up, no no no. Your view is fine, but you're extruding downwards. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then put two back in there. Yeah. Yeah, another way to do that would have been to just change hit that arrow right here. Yeah, and then you can like change the direction. Yeah. Hi. You needed the two inches. Two inches. Mine's in. Mine's mine screwed up. <laughs> so um yeah yeah. Okay. How's it looking? Oh yeah, change the depth. You can change the depth right there. Oh okay. Yeah, to two inches. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. I'm. 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 Yeah. Everything's the same. Okay. Once you extruded it, you can press the green check mark at the top, and that'll be our first extrusion. If you if you have if you can't if you're having trouble seeing the rectangular prism, there's a camera and render options button here on the right. If you click that and press isometric, it'll move your camera to show you your whole object. Um honestly, like 99% of CAD is just making boxes and then making boxes on your boxes and sometimes they're like cylinders or sometimes it's like you you carve a box into the other box but just like making a sketch and extruding it like I was I was not being like I wasn't hmm, I wasn't trying to be like infantilizing earlier that's honestly like 99% of what you need to know to do CAD and then after that it's all just like practicing messing around getting used to all the little like functions of the program which Hence, this shape is to learn all the other functions. So next, what we're going to do is I'm going to, we're going to put this little slot inside the, inside the um, part. Um, in order to do that, we're going to make a sketch that looks like this. Right? So I'm going to go back to our thing here. I'm going to create a sketch. And this time, I'm going to select the top face. And then I'm going to move our camera to the top again. And then I'm going to use a corner rectangle this time. And I'm going to put one of the corners at the top edge and the other corner at the bottom edge. And that's all we need to do until we dimension it out. And for our dimensions, we're just going to use a width of half an inch. And then we're going to move, we're going to put another dimension from the left side of the part to the left side of the slot. And we're going to use a quarter of an inch, so point two. The dimension. Yeah, so so you, you're going to click on the left side of the part, and then you're going to click on the, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's, sometimes you just have to drag it out weird, you know? Yeah, and then, well, use the dimension, so yeah. 
Okay. Okay. So then pull that out. Yeah, that's fine. Actually, too. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Got it. So now it's black. So that means you have your dimensions. Okay. Oh, okay. So if you go right here, you can hit yeah that button and then the drop down. If you hit isometric, you'll be able to see everything. Yes. Yeah, you can just start a new sketch there. Right at the top, on the top. I meant, yeah. So you can you can press the X and then just try again. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and then in order to um, you can push the top on the on that rectangle right there, and then yeah, that should make it easier. Use a two point rectangle. What? You got it too. Oh, your extrude, huh? So do I just click? Yes yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. And then I just click the top. Well, you're gonna hit sketch. Oh, okay. And then, and then you're gonna hit the top of that. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, okay. And then you can move your camera. To the top, oh. yeah, and then you can use it. Oh, all right, Thank yeah, you. rectangle. So what happens? What it means when you have all these red? Is that means you put too much dimensions on, and it doesn't know which dimension to use. So. What I would do is just delete all the dimensions and try again. Yeah. Yeah. That, you okay? Yeah. So hit the, that line. Yep. And then the other line. Perfect. Yeah. Now you can just dimension that out the same way I did. Hit, uh, hit the edges of the sketch instead of the um, corners. No, the edges. Oh. Yeah, that and that. But use the um dimension tool. And then um hit the other edge as well. So click both of the edges. Yeah, and then it'll give you this horizontal. Okay. Yeah. And then do the same thing for between these two. Um, go back into the sketch, so double click on that sketch, and then you'll find the rectangle tool right up top there. And use the double, use a drop down to get the corner rectangle. Yeah. And don't you hit that corner, otherwise it'll lock it on and you can't really move it away from that corner. So yeah, just just put it kind of roughly where you want it to be. Yeah. Yeah. And then use a dimension tool to clean it up. That one will be it's a uh, half half an inch wide and then 0.25 inches from the left. So you see how you have two dimensions that say the same thing? You will always only want one dimension. Otherwise, it'll get confused and it doesn't know which one to use. On shape is smart, so I grade one of them out. So yeah, you could just get rid of that one. Like delete, press. No, 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 don't do that. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, there you go. Once you click it, you can. Okay. Yeah. I'm just so put that make that half an inch. Should it be? <laughs> oh. You can double click it and then you'll be able to edit. No. Yeah. And then you can use the dimension tool. Go from this line to this line, 
No, the, the men's team's goal. You're, you're already selected. Yeah. So you go from that line and then hit that line. Yeah, perfect. Just click both of those lines. You don't have to hit both right? Yeah. And then make a point two five. Yeah. There you go. You can you can actually make the height of that rectangle two inches. Oh wait, what? Wait a second. Okay. Let's go to your first sketch. Double double click that. So you have five inches tall and then something else, right? Yeah. Seven, I think. Seven. So you can change that to what we're supposed to be using, which is three inches wide and two inches tall. Oh, okay. Make that two, actually, the height. Yeah. And then make that one three. Press enter, though, when you're done. That makes sense. Yeah. Now you can hit the green, green check mark. Oh, okay. I should fix it. Now you can go back to your other sketch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Double. Yeah. Yep. Double click the sketch, too. Yeah. Make that two inches tall and 0. 0.5. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. The, there's only, the only thing is that you. It's not supposed to be on the center, right? You you want it to be point at a quarter inch from the left. So make a dimension that selects um the left side and then select the left. Yeah, right there. Yeah. And then and then make it make it um put it somewhere away. Put it far away. Now bring it up. Yeah. Yeah. Put it somewhere else. Yeah. And then make it point two five. Um, <laughs> Did I just delete the sketch and try it again? Yeah. Um, so, I just press red and then press this. Or press this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then use your corner rectangle. Oh, that was the problem. I had a center. Point. Yes. Don't use the don't hit a don't touch any corners. Just like put one on the top edge and put one on the bottom edge. Yeah, sure. It's fine. You can use the dimensions to fix everything. Okay, and then the dimensions were. That's two inches tall. <laughs> Not sure. Just click somewhere. Away. Move move the dimension away from the part. No, you click the origins and I was gonna ask for the angle. Press escape and try again. Okay, so this? Yeah, and then okay, that's fine. Make it two. Okay, nice. So now Make put another dimension. Yeah, that's that works too. Yeah, yeah. Make it half an inch. Yeah, and then make if you zoom in a little, it'll make it easier. Yeah. So then make a dimension from that edge to the left edge. Yeah, and make it point two five. Yeah, perfect. How are we doing? All right. In order to do this step, you're going to want to use the rectangle tool. Yeah, so select that and then use a corner rectangle. Yeah, and then hit put one rectangle on the top edge. I mean, one point. Don't use that corner. Use just the edge. No. Like this edge. On... did it the first time. Yeah. Just make sure to use the rectangle. Press escape. 
There you go. I think you have to choose your skin again. Yeah, right there. Perfect. And then do the same thing for the bottom. Perfect. Yeah. Just snap it together. Now you can use a dimension tool and put those dimensions on. You can select this dimension by hitting that left line and then hit the left of the, the block. So click both of them and then it'll give you. Try again. Delete that. Or just control Z it. Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you're like having an easy time or if you've yeah. like done this before or if it's just going well for you, you can always like open up a new tab and do another sketch where you can like okay. mess around and kind of figure things out and try to create something cool. Don't want to like hold you guys back. And I we're willing to help you with that too. So now what we can do with the sketch is we can cut into our block. So in order to do that, we're going to use the extrude tool again. And in order to see this better, what I like to do is go back to our isometric view. And then you have a few tabs here. And what I'm going to use is the remove tab. So it'll remove material from our block. And I'm going to put the depth to be one and a half inches. So it should look like that before we exit out of extrude. You can always double check that your extrusion is going the right way because it'll show this little like white arrow. Or I mean, you can also like do it and if it's going the wrong way, you just like hit escape and do it backwards, but the little white arrow is very helpful yeah. to me, at least. Isometric view. Yeah. And then um, hit the X on that extrude. Um, so are you selected on, on that, on the thing? Yeah, just click that. Perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what you need. Yeah, I love to live in Israel. <laughs> And once we've got that, we can press the green button, the green check mark, to finish the sketch. Yeah. So we're going to extrude that, right? Um, two inches. Yeah. See how that looks. Um, hit the isometric view. Oh, it looks like you have a second. It's okay. You can hit the X and then let's try try that again. Yeah. So go to your sketch one real quick. Double click it. And let's put some dimensions on that. So hit the top button, top view. I mean, uh, on there. Yeah. And then use the dimension tool. And um, yeah, just hit that line. And then... Yeah. 
you don't have to do that. You can just select the edge. You don't have to um select the point. So try the dimension tool again. You're not on the dimension yeah. tool. So select okay. the dimension tool. That's there you go. Problem. And then hit um just the edge. Just hover your mouse over the edge that you want to dimension and click. Click right now. Just click. Yeah, and then and move up. Yeah, and make that three inches wide. So click again to place the, and then three. Yeah, and then do the same thing for the other edge. Just hover over that, yeah. Just while you're hovering over it, you'll be able to click. So if it's yellow, you click, then you place it down and make it two inches. Perfect, yeah, and then hit that green check mark. Okay, let's go back to our second sketch now. Double click that. So you have it pretty much perfect, just like on that um dimension right there. Make it negative two point five. Yeah. Yeah, and it should just push it. Oh. Huh. Um. Okay. Oh. Works on other programs. Um, the you can delete the uh, yeah, and then um, yeah, and then what we can do is actually go from here to this corner. No, the um, that right side of the yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, click, click the edge, not the corner. Yeah, I'll show you. This one, to this one, and you can subtract like. Make it, I think we're supposed to be like like two five point five. So it's like point seven five from that side. So it's like three minus point seven five. So you can actually type that in three minus point seven five. Yeah. Yes. There you go. And then yeah. Yes. Extrude. Um. So go back to the isometric view so you can see what you're doing. And then, um, yeah, yeah, click it and then go to remove. And then we're going to remove 1.5 inches. Oh, it looks like it. Okay, it's okay. Just, just put 1.5 and then hit enter and then press the green check mark. But you see how um your block's not thick enough? So that first extrude you did, you can edit it to be two inches. So double click that, double click the first extrude. Yes. Yeah. 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 And it's already there. Yep. Yeah. It's not true. I'm going to grab water real quick okay. while you're doing that. Sure. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's better than nothing. Okay, and then when we're done, we can hit the green check mark when we're done with that extrude. And our next step is going to be to make this circle, the little circle right here. And there's actually a pretty neat way to do that. We don't have to sketch it and extrude it again. We can go back to our first sketch, then we'll double click it, and then I'll go move our view to the top view. And then I'm going to use a center point circle, hit the center, and I'm going to just draw a circle. And um, the circle is supposed to be an inch, an inch in diameter. So I'm going to use a dimension tool, highlight the circle, click it, and make it one inch. And then when I hit the green check mark, the circle has disappeared from our object. I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to go to that first sketch, 
I'm going to hit the top view, right? And then I'm going to use the center point circle, hit the center of our origin. I'm going to drag that out until it looks about right. Then I'm going to the dimension tool, highlight the circle, put the dimension down, make it one inch, and finish the sketch. Now I'm going to go back to our isometric view so we can see what it looks like. So we're going back to our sketch one. Okay. Double click. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to circle, center point circle. Do what I did. So we're gonna we're gonna do this on our first sketch. Oh, extruding. Yeah, one point five. Instead of being at the top, we got the bottom. That's why when I was trying to remove it, we were the opposite. Oh, okay. Let's go to your isometric view. Oh. Okay. Yeah, um you can you can uh change the direction by pressing the arrow. This one? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. It's fine if you if you just have it as a bottom. Make it 1.5 inches. Yeah. Yeah, and then hit the green check mark. Perfect. So, go back to your first sketch and just make a circle in it. Double click that first sketch. Double click it to enter. Okay. Yeah, and then and then hit the go go to the view. Yeah, you can put a circle there. Click this origin, and then make it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, traditionally, let's see if we're just like punching like a hole all the way through the shape here. So like hypothetically, it does not matter what dimension we do. But if we wanted to put something like on the bottom, then a hole would also get punched through that if you did like five inches or yeah, something. So it's sketch. not always practical. And if you yeah, forgot, like you how big was my extrusion one? You can double click on extrusion one on the left here and it will tell you, which is handy. Yeah, you got it. Looks good. <laughs> And now we're just going to look at a few more tools that Onshape has. They're kind of cool. Um, so I'm going to zoom in right here. And you can see how we have this curved, this edge curved. That's actually the last feature on our tool, on our part. And that chamfer thing is right here. So if you hit, I mean, sorry, it's called a fillet. And what it does is it, make your, it makes your edge round. So if I select both of these edges, you can keep, you can like click all the edges and it'll just round them off. It's pretty cool. But like I looked at that before, I was like, oh, this is a children's toy. Then I looked at this and I'm like, ah, shape. I guess it's just like you can go. I'm inside. <laughs> You put them on like these other ones. Just like fill it oh, yeah. stuff. I'll be right back. All right. I have been tasked with messing around with the other tools. I print something out. Um you don't have to Oh yeah, okay. So let's see. Champer is like fillet, except for instead of a curve, it's just like you kind of like flatten the edges. You can mention these as well. Um 
So let's say I could do like okay. point. I think so. Print something out. Anything you want. Seven. That's eight. Point seven. Oh, and then it cuts into if if something's glowing red, that means the program is angry with you. In this case, it's because I'm trying to do a chamfer and a fillet, and it doesn't like that. Um, there's probably some way to work around that if you actually need to do a part Reflect with both of these day. things intersecting. Okay. But since I don't need to, I'm just going to delete this. It's like it has a problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Draft. Uh, like makes an angle. If you want to, that's my bad. <laughs> Oh, that didn't do anything. No, it didn't render properly. I think that's because there's fillets on this and it doesn't like that. Okay, Sashi is back. I'm going to let him get back to messing around with it. What I like to do when this happens. Can you fill it? Oh, that was my fill it. Shallow fold, thread, pattern, mirror, boolean split, and forms. Yeah. I'm going to just show them one more thing. Okay. I'd like to show you guys one last thing. And that is when you make a sketch. So say I was supposed to put a sketch at the front and then I put my camera here. There's this cool thing that says text. So then I could just like drag a little box here. I could type my name. And I could put some text onto the box. Oh. And then it'll generate. Oh, so I made it really big. Just fine. That is a sketch as well. So you can extrude it out or in. So it's kind of like <laughs> engraving effectively, except for an additive engraving to extract it. It's not a thing. But that's my favorite feature. You can make everything, I don't know. You uh it is 9 16 so we're gonna do like a second session that goes until 10 30 that's 3d printing but just in case anyone has to go i think session one is technically over now uh but if you don't have any work to be, we'd love to keep you. This also doesn't fit on the table anyway. No. <laughs> Uh, is it okay to put it on the floor? Is it gonna like burn the carpet? No, we burn the carpet. We can put it on.
the table. Okay. How long is the port? Oh, that's Very not work. It's just stepper motors in a way. Okay. Do we have these done here? Do you want to leave? Yeah, you want Look at an extension for it. <laughs> um, we don't for what? The printer. Yeah, I... Oh. Yeah. Um, where you can tell us, uh, number four, it's the only one that's not the only one that's not the only one Marsh. I got it. Eric, I got it. I got it. Oh, not fine. Oh, no. right? Thank you. Because it's not. There was one right under there. Oh, there was. Yeah, okay. Good finds. 
So would you have to me a little bit of a question? No, I'm like, 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 I'm um, it like really seems like upper at age. Do you have any more like understanding the entire like fleet of um <laughs> of like printers? Whatever. Yeah. So I was like, this would be fun, and we do CAD and whatever. Yeah, so I was like, this sounds nice. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. just um uh, we just look for people who have no arms and then give them one. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, we haven't found anyone without any arms. It looks like everybody was born with two of them. Everyone actually has two arms. Yeah, exactly. So people, yeah. Yeah. Um, but let's see. Exactly. So I guess right now what we're doing this year is, or last year we were focused on... I forget what the certification is. I yeah, I do not know what to do. But it's um you Huh? What are we certified as? What did we do last year? What you mean? Oh, I don't know. What you doing, bro? I see Mr. Bossman. <laughs> Why all this, man? Yeah, the good bro. Meal color. Why? 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 What? Yeah. So you're gonna eat only vegetables? You're so mean. No, I'm smart. Um, yeah. Do I get food then? That's crazy. They get the food there at Boy, I gotta wait until eleven o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Nine twenty-nine. I have a meeting. <laughs> Have you been awake for too long or something? Like? I've been awake for 12 hours now. <laughs> what? That's it. We literally only been Even I woke up earlier than that. 9.30. Oh, thanks. Sorry. Yeah, you wanna come print some shit? I don't know. Come print some shit. How? Just come. Wireless. Yes. No, no, you don't. It's not that deep. It's not super formal in there. I promise. I'm. I'm a teacher. Sorry, okay. Why in the year? Danda ma, danda chora kinga mari queen ma. Undia on the seat of a 
Do I have to switch zooms? Do I have to switch zooms? Um, I'll just turn it around. Turn my laptop around. I don't. I don't need to use it while it's printing. Yeah, just so people can see. It. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need it. You don't need it. No. There's plenty of people here without their laptop. Okay, come. Because it was for the man. Yeah. Yeah, it's not for the man. You think it's mild, but it's like one week. It's a I am, yeah. I'm from like Central Maryland. Are you from Indiana? Okay, I'm gonna get started. Amazing. Okay. Put that okay. Oh. 
Why is there somebody in the waiting room? I'm gonna just let him in, bro. Oh, I think it's their job to be letting him in. Okay, hello everybody. Is it on, man? Oh, okay. Okay. Hello. I am Sashu. I'm gonna turn my camera on right now. Where says camera? Start video. Okay. Hello. I'm Sashu. And and today we're gonna learn about 3D printing. First of all, um, who are we? We are part of the Accessible Prosthetic Initiative at University of Maryland. And what we do is we make inexpensive prosthetic devices. Sorry, I forgot I was supposed to explain the slide. Yeah, so what we do is we 3D print prosthetics. This is our arm that we made, I think, last semester. It's a, like you move your elbow and the arm closes. So I believe that's voluntary closing arm. Uh, API is actually a national organization. We're just the Maryland branch of it. So there's branches at like other institutions, Ohio State's where it was founded. Uh, there's Brown, there's Georgia Tech. There's others that I forgot. Sorry, other colleges. Um. Yeah. Um, so in order to 3D print something, you have to make a design in your computer. And that's what we use computer-aided design for. But in my honest opinion, that's boring. That's so boring. So today what we're gonna do is we're just going to print some things. Um, so for today, if you want to use the design that you might've been working on over the past 15 minutes, that would work perfectly. Otherwise, I'll show you where you can find some cool things to download and print. All right, what is manufacturing? Uh, manufacturing makes sense, best divided into two categories, uh, additive or subtractive. So I guess, actually, I've thought of a better metaphor since I last did this slide. Um, if you're making a sculpture, you can either, like, take your little, like, small balls of clay and, like, first you add, like, a body and then a head and then, like, a little nose or something to make your little sculpture guy that would be additive because you're physically putting new parts on. Subtractive would be like if you have a big block of clay and then you're like carving it out. So you're removing stuff. So I guess there's pros and cons to each. Um, 3D printing is actually pretty cool because like one of the big cons to additive manufacturing, which is like, you know, cheaper, you don't have a bunch of waste material but you end up with joints, which are kind of a weak point in your thing. Like if I'm screwing two pieces of wood together, that screw joint is a weak point. Um, 3D printing uses heat to kind of like melt the plastic together. So it's one unit. There's no like joints or anything to worry about, which is cool. Um, specifically, there's kind of a lot of like different processes that could be called 3D printing. Um, stereolithography, I'll be honest, I did a project on this in high school and I still don't really understand quite how it works. It has to do with like UV light, like fusing the material to itself. Selective laser sintering is like a similar thing where you put, you have like a big bowl of dust and then you use a laser to kind of fuse the dust together. That's what's happening with this thing on the top left which is very cool. Um, 3D printing is a lot simpler to think about for me at least, and because I can see it. Um, you have a little nozzle and it builds. That's what we're doing. Okay, so today we're using the Creality Ender 5 Plus. I have another 3D printer here. It's the Creality Ender 3, but it's in pieces, so we're not gonna use that. Um, it prints many different plastic materials, um, like PLA, which is what is the most cheap and we're going to use it today. 
Um, so it prints in layers and it's pretty accurate to 0.1 millimeters and as no, we'll see it in action. Last time we did this workshop, we kind of made some, uh, what's it called? Keychains, but feel free to make whatever you want, even if it doesn't hang off a keychain. Um, I forgot to bring the ring parts of the keychains, but uh, we, we lost them. That's why. But um, yeah, I'll I'll show you what we're going to do today. Uh, first of all, if you are going to be using one of your things from Onshape, what you want to do in order to use that is go down here to where it says Part Studio One or whatever your part's name was, and then we're going to export it. So we right click on that and and then export it as a STL. And STL is a file type that printers like. So we're going to export that, leave all of this as however it was. So make sure if you were using inches before, make sure it's in inches, but I was in millimeters. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Um, and then, then we're just going to download it to our computer. It's gonna go straight to our downloads folder. As you can see, I downloaded that part as an STL and I could open it in Paint 3D for some reason. And it's pretty cool, yeah, you know. Yeah, so okay, I don't know how to do that on this computer. Not really, but here's the idea of how our 3D printer works. Our 3D printer is actually really, really, really stupid. All it can do is extrude um, plastic. Okay, I'm gonna show you this. All, all it does is extrude pr plastic through this extruder and then it moves the extruder around. But it doesn't know how to move it or anything. So we have to write a program to tell the 3D printer how to do it. And the code that we use is called G code. So for each move that it does, each time it goes this way and then it goes up and then it goes down and then it moves around the X and Y axis. For each move, we have to write a line of code. And we're not going to do all of that. That's so much work. So we're. Because those three printers those. But. But, but what, what's interesting is that somebody has to write the code that writes the code. But we're not worried about that. Today, what we're going to use is we're going to do is we're going to use some software that will write the code for us to tell the 3D printer how to move around and print. And we're going to use the software called. what it's called um it's, it's looking for no, no 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 not that oh. not that not that not that it's in Wait, but that's not the slicer we want to use. Four, eight. Ah, okay, okay. Now I, I remember, it's called Kira, Ultimaker Kira. This is software that takes the object that we're gonna have and slices it into layers and then write some code to move the um, printer around to print it out. So what we can do right now is go here and download it for free and download whichever version your computer will run. But so if, if you can't download the software right now, it's fine. Um, we'll just do it all together here for your items. Anyway, 
while that downloads. Oh, I did not realize it would take this long. Get out of the way. While we um are doing that, for the new people that did not learn how to use computer-aided design, we're going to go to this website called thingiverse.com. Thing I verse Thingiverse. There's really cool stuff on here, actually. I'm looking at it right now. They've got like Halloween. Oh, like, oh, oh, oh. There's also a lot of put some things in there. Might have to approve up. So sorry about that. <laughs> what if I just like? <laughs> oh wait, that's another one. What? Yeah. And these are cool. These are fine. These are fine. At this website, we can download STLs and, and stuff. Wait, why do I not have Kira already? This is what happened. Last time, I had a computer and I did the workshop. And then I was walking to my car and it rained. And then my computer got fucked up. That's why that's why I don't have cure on. Yeah, we just came back. We we yeah, we just printed it and then like in the no, like I was here after the workshop and then, actually I was the only one here by the so I was just I, I Came back in the morning. I, I mean, I left the printer here, and then we just printed some shit in the morning. That's mad embarrassing. I can't believe I have overlooked this step. Let's see what things I have. An inch by an inch by an inch. All right. Uh, if we go back to the presentation, wherever that one, I think it's this one. Hell yeah. Um, you'll notice this spec on the three D printer. It can print at 60 to 180 millimeters per second. I meant to put this in terms that I understand, but then I forgot to. So I don't know like how fast that is, but from experience, I know it's slow as hell. Um, so so everyone can like actually like print a part and get it tomorrow morning. Um, we'd like for you to choose something that's like fits in a one inch by one inch by one inch cube um, just to kind of expedite things. If you already have a CAD file, like hypothetically, I would assume there is a way to resize all of these dimensions. I do not know how to do that on Onshape. So I'm going to look that up now and then we'll let you know. What did you say? I don't know. I'm just wondering. Oh, we did last year. Like we just left it here overnight. Okay. We left it on the tables upstairs. Okay. So do you want to do that again this year? I don't know. I don't. I don't have the energy for that this year. Huh? I, I don't. I don't know. You might. I, I mean, you can take it back. Too. Yeah. So you can take it back. Yeah. I'm just wondering because I I don't know if you're gonna print stuff like I'm not familiar with 3D printing at all. I don't know like how long it'll take to print. If the printer needs to be stationary to print. Yeah, it does need to be stationary, but um, but. Yeah, because we gotta get out of this room. Yeah, we'll get out of this room for okay. sure. Yeah. Okay. We'll just be like upstairs. Yeah, that's whatever you want to do. We just need to be out of here by like ten thirty, ten forty five. That's that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Printing. But my computer fucked up, bro. What? I don't have the software that controls the three printer. Yes. 
Yeah. So last time I did this workshop, it was fine. I had the software that does the thing. Yeah. Then one day I was going home from work and it rained really, really hard. And the rain got through my backpack onto my All right. Backpack. Terrible <laughs> news. Onshape is not a very good program. <laughs> so at least per these forums, uh, it, it looks like there is no way to like select the whole sketch and be like, make this half the size it is now. Um, so I'd suggest like working from your okay well i guess first of all i suggest creating a copy in case you like mess it up real bad so then you can go back to the original um and i'd suggest working from like details and then going inward from that or just like rebuilding the whole thing if it's not too much of a pain is definitely the easiest
Broken. It's broken, bro. <laughs> Oh, uh, I had an idea. Instead of like sticking flash drives in every single person's computers, create like a shared Google Drive that they can upload their stuff to, and then we can just like download it to the flash drive. Yeah, that works too. All right, we can set that up. No, just use the use the Adobe one. Everything else broke. Everything else is a scam. That one. Okay, so let's see. Um, I don't want to like keep you all here because the printer is being annoying. 3D printers are always like this. Pro tip, bad machines. Um, so <laughs> what I have done is I have created a Google Drive where you can put your STL file. Um, you should name it your name so that way we know whose it is. Uh, Hypothetically, if you scan this QR code, it will allow you to access that Google Drive. Can someone please test this and let me know if that actually works? It should just be like an empty Google Drive folder called Technica 2023 prints. Who asked this question? Oh. This was a like, normal sign. Whatever was default, it's not medium. You hit, leave it there. Yeah. All right, fixing the permissions. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. That's true. I probably accidentally shared read only. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. Edit. All right. Uh, 
That looks like it didn't change at all, but perhaps it did. Hmm. Yay, okay, good, good, good. All right, the link works. Wait. 
I don't know how I'm going to pull this off, bro. Yeah. Um. Oh, we have 15, 14 minutes of the entire work. I'm not going to print shit. I'm giving up. I'm going to just see that it will print or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll yeah, we'll be able to print it out. Okay, cool. Hey, Kira's down. Kira. Oh let's go. Thank you. 
No, I'm trying to figure it out. We can like, like, do you need to have your stuff? We need to start cleaning up the workshop. Okay. Are you sure this won't work? Yeah. Oh, shit. What? I know. Marsh put this up. Get your, oh, did you pause? Did you leave the zone already? Should be here. Oh, what the?